This is the I3S Pattern Plus instruction video. We have a database of a frog species, 21 individuals, 66 different images, and we're going to annotate an unknown frog image. As is normal for all I3S versions, we start by clicking on the reference points. So here, belly left, belly right, and then we just annotate the boundaries of the recognition area. Normally I3S would extract the key points right away, but that approach does not ver uh, work very well for this species. The reason is that the yellow pattern is very stable, but the grey pattern is not, and the shades of grey tend to vary with age of the frog. So you get all kinds of different key points in those grey areas, and that really messes up the recognition. I3S Pattern Plus handles this by asking the user to tell what is background and what is foreground. So foreground would be the yellow area and the gray would be the background. And reduce the recognition area uh, to a, basically a two color image. Either, each pixel is either foreground or background. That image is then used for key point extraction and as long as the user tells I3S what is background and foreground, um, all those variations in the, in the gray area uh, will have no impact on the, uh, recognition performance. So how do you tell I3S what's background and foreground? Basically, you click on the pixels. With these buttons, you tell I3S if you're going to select foreground or background, and we're going to select some foreground pixels to start. Those will be indicated with a blue cross. And you just try to catch all the varieties of yellow you see. Here it's a bit white yellow, so we click here as well. Here's a, a bit fake. Next we're going to annotate some background pixels. So we click on the background button and we just make sure we cover all the varieties of grey we see. From almost black to almost white. And as you can see here, it's a bit of, well, some dirty yellow influences. So let's click here as well. Next we ask I3S Based on this selection of examples, classify all pixels either as background or foreground. This is the result. Only the foreground pixels are labeled as such, but you can assume that the rest of the pixels is labeled as background. If you want to see what's beneath the labeling, just draw the slider to the left or to the right, to the right. The pixels, the foreground pixels are completely opaque and to the left they're completely transparent. It's just for the user, it has no impact on the recognition whatsoever. I3S immediately uses this two value image to extract the key points and here you see the results. If you're not satisfied with the um, background foreground separation Click on this button to go back to the pixel selection and you can add some more pixels. If you make a mistake, for example, if I select a background pixel in the foreground area and make a separation, you see that I3S really has a problem understanding what is background and foreground. In this case, go back 
to your pixel selection, correct your mistake by clicking on the right mouse button and ask i3s to redo um, the separation. Well, this looks okay. So let's see whether we can compare this frog image to the rest of the database. As you can see, it matches best with two examples of T002. And let's have a closer look. So well, let's focus on this area here. And this area here. But you can see here, this, this, this spot over here is, ident is identical to this one here. And this one here is the same as this one here. So this is a proper match. And we can decide to include it in the database as a new instance of this uh, individual in the usual way. This concludes the i3s Pattern Plus instruction video.